the NHS wasn't on the ballot paper, but it was on the ballot bus. Vote leave for a better funded health service, 350 million pounds a week. So this is Simon Stevens, former president of Global Health at United Health Group, the biggest American private health insurer. And now he is CEO of NHS England. He was previously NHS privatisation advisor to Tony Blair until he left to join United Health, where his job was to find new markets for health insurance. This former health insurance man, not Jeremy Hunt, is running our NHS. Stevens is seemingly objecting to the Brexit campaign as making false promises. This is a bit rich. Stevens is busily setting up the NHS to collapse into an American insurance model. Simon Stevens was the, the, the guy who, who was president of uh, United's global operations. Uh, and these are very big parts of, of, of these big corporations that uh, are not widely understood. The growth in health insurance in the U.S. is limited. It's not a growth opportunity for them. In fact, it's actually shrinking. So they're looking abroad. Uh, and they're looking to see how they can get enmeshed into uh, the healthcare systems of, of other countries. Uh, the UK in particular, they had a, a presence in the UK for, for many years. And of course, if they are uh, coming out of a, a big for-profit insurance corporation in the US, they have a bias. They have uh, undoubtedly uh, a, a view of the world uh, and are probably hired because of their background uh, working for a large corporation. Here's what the campaign director of Vote Leave said in January this year. Quote, Pundits and MPs kept saying, why isn't Vote Leave arguing about the economy and living standards? They didn't realise that for millions of people, 350 million for the NHS was about the economy and living standards. That's why it was so effective. It was clearly the most effective argument. Not only with the crucial swing fifth, but with almost every demographic. Would we have won without the 350 million for the NHS? All our research and the close results strongly suggests no. Some people now claim this was cynical and we never intended to spend more on the NHS. Wrong, close quotes. We know lying to the public and misleading them is very effective. Stevens should know this all too well, having a degree in politics, philosophy and economics. His five-year forward view, published in 2014, is a masterful piece of praise for the NHS while obscuring the true intent of his plan. It does not mention privatisation, nor how an insurance system is being created. It does mention NHS staff working across traditional boundaries, which means downskilling or dumbing down the workforce. Also, productive investment, which means more privatisation of NHS assets and the provision of services. Not exactly clear and transparent. Rather than criticising these commitments to the NHS, promises entered into by cabinet ministers and MPs, the public will doubtless want to see them honoured. By the end of the next financial year for the NHS, March 2019, the United Kingdom will have left the European Union. Trust in democratic politics will not be strengthened if anyone now tries to argue you voted Brexit partly for a better funded health service, but precisely because of Brexit, you now can't have one. What about Stevens's promises? He constantly talks about improvement and sustainability, but his toxic top-down imposed reforms are destroying the very fabric of the NHS. Did he mean improved access for corporations to NHS budgets or sustainable profits for private insurers? NHS England employ legions of management consultants and the big four accountants to produce deceptive marketing to win public support. There is no efficiency enabling more money to be siphoned away from patient care by private providers. When did you last see the big four accountancy firms KPMG, PwC, Ernst & Young, Deloitte look after the sick? These are the same people that failed to alert us to the 2008 financial crash and enable industrial scale tax dodging, taxes that should be spent on our public services, yet they have been given the reins of the NHS. Unbelievable. A modern NHS is itself part of the practical answer to the deep social concerns that gave rise to Brexit. 
at a time of national division, an NHS that brings us together, an institution that tops the list of what people say makes them proudest to be British, ahead of the army, the monarchy, or the BBC, unifying <coughs> young and old, town and country, the struggling and the better off. Yes, the NHS is the most beloved institution in the country. So why is Stevens destroying it? The Orwellian titled Sustainability and Transformation Plans are being forced through in the face of opposition. How democratic is that? Yes, people are uniting across the country in places like Grantham, Sutton, Stafford, Bristol and Manchester, uniting to fight the closure of their local hospitals and GP services. Stevens highlights the cynicism of the politicians and the damage to public trust, yet his own words and tactics are second to none. He is in charge of the greatest betrayal of the public interest. If I lived in England uh, and I relied on care from the National Health Service, which I know has been around for many decades, and uh, I would be very worried about what is likely to happen down the road. Under Stevens' watch, there were 30,000 excess deaths in 2015 as a result of cuts to health and social care. Patients across the country unable to access life-saving care in overstretched hospitals. This absolute scandal is ignored. How many more people will have to die so that corporate raiders can steal our NHS? When will mainstream media hold Stevens and his accomplices to account? I encourage you to read Stevens' speech. There is no mention of privatisation or the private insurance system he is implementing. Stevens calls for more money to fund his destructive plans and increase the amount available for siphoning to private corporations, not for patient care. Integration sounds great, but Stevens wants to integrate privatised and means-tested social services with the NHS to allow for the backdoor introduction of patient charges. Either you do without care, pay for, pay for care out of your own pocket or through private insurance cover. Integration will pool health and social care budgets ready to hand over to private corporations. We can have someone like Simon Stevens running the show. Um, it clearly comes with experience of working for a big corporation and, uh, and how, that uh, how that corporation makes money. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I would be very concerned. I would think it would bode ill for, uh, uh, for the UK. Stevens is not the defender of the NHS a publicly funded and provide, provided universal service. He is fully aligned with the defunding and the engineered failure of the NHS, a failure that will be used to justify the Americanization of our health service. Stephen's key messages are, don't trust the politicians, trust me. I need more money to reinvent the NHS. Integration is best for the patient. Don't fall for this deceptive marketing. It's a scam. Please support our film. Thank you.